So this is a Creality Enter 5 Pro and in this video we're going to see if we can get this BL Touch sensor fitted to the printer. So here's the BL Touch that I purchased, it's a version 3.1. I got quite a good deal on this but unfortunately it didn't come with all of the parts required for fitting it to the printer so I went on the internet and I found this kit uh, which I purchased from Amazon here in the UK. I'll put a link for it in the description and basically it just contains it has another one of these USB programming cables but it contains all the other stuff I'm going to need to be able to fit it onto Manda 5 Pro so yeah first step is to get the uh, sensor fitted to the printer so here's the progress so far I've mounted the BL touch onto its bracket and then attached that to the print head and I've also attached the cable and I've fed that through the cable tidy. So all that's left to do now is to finish this off by putting the zip ties back on and then we're going to open up the bottom of the printer and connect it onto the main board. So here's the underside of the printer with the cover removed. There's just kind of four screws in each corner holding it on but you have to be careful when you're removing it because there is a fan connected to this uh, panel. So yeah, just be careful when taking that off. So next thing I needed to do was to um, disconnect this uh, display connector that goes onto here. Uh, there was some hot glue on there, which is always a pain to get off, but managed to take that off so that we can disconnect this. And also I needed to disconnect, you can see here the Z axis connector here. So then next what we're going to do is attach this. So as you can see here, you can see the yellow wire uh, it goes to the signal, uh, the red to the VCC, which is like the positive and the ground is the blue in the middle. So this is going to go into the display connector and the display is going to go back into there. And this red one will hopefully replace uh, the original Z stop. So yeah, let's get that fitted. So this is what it looks like when it's all connected up. So next thing we need to do is to flash the firmware on the printer. Now the, the main board that came with this printer is the silent board, which is version 1.1.5. And this is an 8-bit board. And in order to flash the 8-bit board, you need to use the USB to ISB converter that comes with the BL Touch. So basically this end goes into the laptop and then in this end here plugs into the pins which are next to the display connector up here and I believe when you're plugging it in it goes in this way you're looking at the board and these are the pins that are look like the power pins so those ones go on top so it goes in like that so yeah let's get this plugged into the laptop and then jump onto the laptop and look at the process for flashing the firmware so in order to download the firmware for the printer I went to the main Creality website and if you go to the support menu and click download it should take you through to all of the different firmwares that you can download so clicking on Ender Series firmware you can see it's the Ender 5 Pro listed now I've got the 1.1.5 mainboard but the problem is if you install these firmware files these do not have the BL Touch enabled so we can't use those alternatively there is also the accessories firmware and if you click on the BL Touch firmware for 8-bit motherboards again there are some firmware files here that you can use but I found that these were running an older version of Marlin so next up I wanted to see if I could actually build my own version with the BL Touch enabled using a newer version of Marlin so in order to build your own version of the firmware, you can go to the main Marlin website and click on the downloads area, which will take you through to where you can download the latest release of Marlin, which is 2091 at the moment. So once you've downloaded the main source files, you then also need to go to the configurations area, which takes you through to GitHub. And here you can download the configurations which are specific to the Ender 5 Pro. And conveniently, they provided a set of configurations files for the 8-bit boards 
which are shown here. So once you've downloaded these files as well, you need to apply them to your main Marlin files under the Marlin folder. So just replace the configurations files and also add the uh, logos or boot screens to the source files as well. Now, in order to build the firmware, uh, conveniently on the Marlin website, there is an install section. And what I chose to do was the install Marlin with platform IO options. And I went with the VS code option. So just follow this guide and hopefully it will get you set up to be able to build the firmware uh, on your laptop. So once you've got it all set up correctly, it will look something like this. So this is a VS code running the platform IO plugin. And as you can see here, we have all of the source files for building the firmware. Now, first up, what I needed to do was to change the main platform IO dot any file and set the default environment to Melzy optimized. Now, the reason I chose this one is that the default Melzy environment was causing a problem when compiling the firmware that it was basically too big uh, for fitting onto the 8-bit boards because there's a 128 kilobyte limitation on how big the firmware can be. So if you use the Melzy optimized version, that should be able to give you a bit more space. Then secondly, I then had to modify the configuration.h files in order to enable the BL touch settings. Now, I'm not going to go through these exhaustively because there's a really good guide by uh, Teaching Tech that I'll put a link to in the description that goes through what changes you need to do to the configuration files in order to enable the BL touch. The only other things I wanted to mention is that in order to actually get this to fit within the 128K, I had to enable the slim menus uh, inside of the configuration.h and in the advanced configuration file, I had to, if I can find it, uh, disable arc support in order to save some space. But then once I'd done that and applied the BL touch changes, I was able to compile the firmware. And once it's built, then if you go to the .pio folder and then under build and the Melzy optimized, you should be able to find the firmware.hex file, which is the compiled version of the firmware, which we're now going to try and upload onto the printer. So in order to install the firmware on the printer, we're going to try and use the software, which you can download from the main Creality website. So if you go to the support download section and then click on the end of series firmware and then choose the end of five pro, there's a set of files here which we can download and we're after the 8 bit version for the 115 mainboard. So once you've downloaded these files and open them up, if you go into the first folder, which is for Marlin 118, there is a file in here called progisp 1.72, which we can extract. And this contains the software that we can use to flash the firmware on the printer. Now, just worth noting is that this is a .rar file. So I use a program called 7-zip to extract them. And the other thing I did was when I first extracted this, I had some problems with the program crashing. And what I ended up doing was extracting it to a root folder on my C drive. And once I did that, I was able to run the program without it crashing with an access violation. So right now, let's plug the USB cable into the printer and see if we can flash the firmware that we've just built. So once you're inside the PROG ISP program, it's pretty straightforward to flash the firmware. So first thing you need to do is select the right chip. And in our case, it's the 80 mega 1284P. So choose that from the list. Then we need to go over here to this 
bottom with three dots and clicking on that we need to do the fuses so first thing we need to do is click the read button here at the bottom and that should set the values to d6 dc and fd and then what we then need to do is to then click the right button uh, to write those back so we close that and then next we need to do is go to the top right corner and hit load flash then what we're going to do is pick the firmware file that we built earlier and open that and then finally we're going to hit the auto button which will start the flashing process and then wait for that to finish okay so looks like the flashing has finished so all we need to do now is close this program down disconnect the USB cable and uh, plug the printer back in and switch it on and hopefully we should have updated the firmware okay so the printer is all back together and plugged in so now let's switch it on and see if the firmware update has worked okay that's a good start you can see here it's got the right version of Marlin on there okay so it looks like there's an EPROM error so I think we need to do a reset and yeah there we go that's fantastic so let's have a little look inside the menu to make sure everything looks okay looks a bit different to the previous version so let's have a look at the about printer printer information fantastic so yeah so far so good um, so next thing we need to do now is uh, set up the bed leveling so yeah let's go and do that next so first up we're going to test to see if the BL touch is working properly so if we come down to here and go to the menu and choose configuration there's some BL touch settings on this firmware now what's interesting on here is there are two options on here called deploy and stow which activates the BL touch so if we do deploy we can see that the probe has come down and then if we come back to here and we do stow and click that then we should see that go back up again which it does so we know the BL touch is working fine so next thing we want to do is if we go back into the menu is under motion we want to try the auto home now just worth noting i've already removed the the old z stop switch from here to avoid any problems where potentially the bed is going to come up and hit that as it's now using the bl touch but yeah if we try using the auto home this should now be using the bl touch instead so as you can see we should expect this to go back to the corner and then it should come to the middle the probe should be deployed and now the bed should come up and hopefully once this comes up it should stop moving okay that's good Okay, and as we can see, what I think happens is that it usually retracts by about a centimetre once the auto home is done. And as you can see, the Z is now at 10, so that all looks correct. So next thing we need to do now is adjust the Z offsets. So in order to adjust the Z offset, we now need to come into the menu under motion and move access go to move Z and now what we want to start doing is moving the bed up towards the nozzle just enough so that we can slide a piece of paper under there almost like the same technique you would use if you were leveling the bed manually so first up we're going to raise the bed up to the zero position so we just need to move it by about one centimeter Okay, and now we're going to start moving in very small increments uh, into the negative, as you can now see, 
because I'm adjusting this. I'm going into a negative value and the print head is getting quite close to the bed so it's at this point I'm going to put in my sheet of paper and I'm going to go now to doing a smaller adjustment probably at 0.1 millimeters and I'm going to start continuing and I'm going to see if I'm getting any resistance when I'm sliding the paper it's still quite loose so I'm going to go back a bit more so this is now at minus 3.5 and it's still quite loose so just a bit more okay I can feel it grabbing the paper now on the nozzle and we're at minus 3.6 so what we need to do now is exit this go back up to the top menu go to configuration and this probe Z offset now we need to set this to the same value which was 3.6 ok nearly there ok so once we have that we need to do store settings and then we're going to try the auto home again and make sure that it has remembered that new setting Okay, so the auto homing is complete. If we come back here, we can now see that the Z is now at 13.6, so it's the 10 millimeters plus the Z Pro volt set that we've done, which is 3.6, which means that that now looks correct. So the way that we can test this is if we zero the Z again, then when it's at the zero position, uh, we should be able to slide the paper underneath as we did before and then again just feel some of that resistance that we had so here we just need to be a bit careful so we don't have any problems with the nozzle hitting the bed so now that we're back at zero if I take my piece of paper yep I can feel just some slight drag on that so that looks good so yeah I think We've now set the Z offset, so next thing to do now is to test that the bed levelling is working when we're trying to do a print. So this is Cura, the slicing software I use with my 3D printer. And in order to add the auto bed levelling to the startup sequence, we need to add it to the machine settings. So under the settings menu, you can go to manage printers. And then on the machine settings, we need to modify the start G code. So after the G28 command, which homes the printer, we need to add a G29 command, which will start the auto bed leveling process. So that's all we should need to do, right? So I'll go and slice this first layer test and then we'll see what it does on the printer. <laughs> 